Alright, so this is going to be a walkthrough for how I make these 3D flags. I had a lot of requests to do something like this, so we'll walk through the toolpath, CNC, and how I set it up on my laser. I use Aspire. First thing is to import the SDL. This draped flag is on our PatriotNationDesigns.com website. Um, so the first thing when it imports is to size it the, to the size that you want. For this I'm using making a 24 inch flag. I always set the X and Y first, keeping the XYZ ratio locked, and then unlock it to set the depth to a quarter or three quarters of an inch. I use three quarter inch Baltic birch. So once it's loaded in, the next step is to position it on the material that I'm using. I've got Baltic birch cut down to 20 inches by 48 inches, so that's why the the backing there is 20 inches by 48 inches as well. You can see here that it's super thin when it imports um, with one real high uh, wave there. And so I always add a um, quarter inch base, which thickens everything up. Um, it reduces the overall height of the waves, but gives me a sturdier flag when I'm only using three quarter inch material for these. I reduce my shape height just a little bit because I'm putting another 3D object onto it. So now we're importing the Viking. I got this off of 3dwave.com. This was a huge file uh, when it imported, so it, it took a little bit to load. So the same thing, keeping the XYZ locked, sizing it down first, and then unlocking it and making it thinner by changing our Z axis. For some reason the model was below the, the level, um, the zero plane. And so I just played with it here to show you um, what happens when you adjust that. I want the entire model to be above it. And so I lowered it all the way down to the bottom so that it would raise the model up. And it looks good, so we'll save that. And both of our models will be showing up now. So it imported a little bigger, um, so you can just quickly go over to scale and shrink it down. And then I position it right in the center of the flag. Go to 3D view to see how it looks. Um, I always check it to make sure I like the look of it um, before calculating any toolpath. Um, it did import too tall, so decreasing the shape height because we need to stay below that three quarter of an inch mark. And you can just sit here and play with it um, until you get it to look like you want. So I always use the, the border tool here. Uh, for both models, I create an outline. Um, these will be used later for our light burn. You can see them there in pink. And then also that outside border on the flag I use for um, cutting out the flag from the material with a, with a flat end mill. So I'm exporting the outline vector here. Uh, again, this is what I'm going to use to make an SVG overlay for the laser. 
so I need to know my borders. So now we're on toolpath. So I skipped roughing. Um, I, I don't know why, I just always do. Um, for this model with the detail of the biking, I'm using a 1.5 um, millimeter bit. And then here it, it gave me an error because the, the model height was too tall. Um, I needed it set to three quarter of an inch. So quickly adjusting it there, adjust the entire piece back down to, to three quarters of an inch. Um, so that's nice and convenient that Aspire does that. So you can see my bits and feed rates here. I use a 7% step over the 1.5 millimeter, like I said. I always run around 18,000 RPM and 125 inches per minute with a high plunge rate somewhere around 75 to 100. And then I did a 45 degree angle for this. Um, the reason for that is that very first pass is kind of scary, skipping roughing. And so when you're doing it at an angle, it just starts in the corner and then it, it uh, takes a little bit off at a time. So it's, it's a lot less stressful on the machine. So then we'll go back and we'll do our um, profile path, cutting out the flag. I use a quarter inch end mill, just flat. And a couple of passes, I think this takes like 13 passes to cut through it. Um, and I go a little bit slower on my feed rate just because I've had a couple mishaps where it's jammed up and cut right through them the flag. Preview the model. So you can see how it starts in that bottom right corner, just taking a tiny bit off that first path pass and then because it's taking off 7% of 1.5 millimeters it's a roughing pass I just feel isn't necessary with Baltic birch it's a softer wood and that looks pretty darn good pretty happy with that render so we'll save this tool pass that's what will get sent to the machine Okay, so the export um, from before, this is a draped um, cracked look flag that I've made. I believe it's on Patriot Nation as well. Um, what I did was I imported the um, outline and the outline of the Viking in the center, um, filled it in white so you can see it there. Um, that's what I exported from Aspire when I did that profile tool. Uh, copy and paste it over that draped flag and then um, Adobe has those shape modes and you can just extrude it over. So it leaves, leaves a nice outline white where the laser won't go, so it leaves my Viking alone. And then those lines get butted up right nice and neat against the model. All right, so I use UGS um, to send everything. So this is what it looks like pulled up there. Changing my feed rate to 125. I have everything centered in the front left and starting my, my spindle up to, I think I did 19,000 RPM. This is a CNC for newbie new carve. Um, it's gotten over a four foot by three foot cutting area. I've cleaned my shop since I made this video. I always get nervous right before I send it. I don't know if that will ever go away, but. This is what it looks like um, without a roughing pass. That first dip is the scariest. And then from there, it's just a little bit each time.
side. So it's just finishing up the final corner. Came out really nice. I love the way that this uh, furniture grade Baltic birch looks. I sand it with 220 and then sanding sealer and then 350 grit after a second coat of sanding sealer. And then I spray paint it with matte Rust-Oleum times two <clears throat> spray paint and use ultra fine steel wool to give it this look. So here <clears throat> in light burn, um, we're ready for the laser. You can see that I've got the outside border selected. It's got its own line fill. So I, I outline it on my wasteboard. Um, I get asked this a lot, how do I line things up? I just burn the outside vector and I place my piece inside that vector or inside that the burn outline. Um, I also um, choose some vectors around the center model and I separate those and I do a very light burn um, to where it doesn't mark it at all, but I can watch where that path is going to go to make sure that it's perfectly centered. So for my actual fill burn uh, for the flag, I run 4500, 75% uh, power, 2% overscanning, and 0 0.09 um, line overlap, line interval. And then you home the machine, and it is ready to go. So here I'm burning that outside vector like I mentioned so that I know where to put the flag. So my wasteboard's a little messy because of this, but it works. And it's easy. So I've lined up my piece and started to burn. Um, this cracked look is one of my favorites. I do it on a lot of the flags I've been doing here recently, um, but it does add a significant amount of time to the overall carve with a little diode laser. Um, this is a Niji 30 watt 2S Max. A CO2 would definitely go a lot faster. And then I always, um, I use the move option in Lightburn um, to bump up the speed and power if I need to. Uh, I normally bump it up by 10% a couple of times um, just to make it go a little faster if it's burning well. This is after a significant amount of time, but it came out great after, after this one burn. It does darken the wood just a little bit, but it really cleans the, the paint off um, really nicely. two coats of enamel and that's it. One of my favorites, hopefully this was helpful. And uh, we're running a great sale on Patriot Nation right now, so I'll definitely go check that out.